St. Patrick's Day has arrived, a day we love to drink beer, even this stuff. Well, Glenn, I prefer my Irish beer dark and my pickles fried. We've got ourselves some pub grub. Nice. He's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Macnow. And from the Concha Hot Good Brewing Company Bridgeport Brew Pub, this is What's Brewing. What's Brewing, brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. And by the Conshohocken Brewing Company, now with five locations. This season, stay up, stay out, stay wild, stay cool, and stay together because you don't have to go far to get away. Book your stay and receive offers of up to $250 at these premier attractions. Hey, welcome to What's Brewing. It's our second season. We're delighted to be back. I'm Glenn Macnow, WIP Radio. He's Joe Sixpack, noted beer authority, and I got to tell you, it's a tough one for me. It's, I know it doesn't affect the taste, but we'll get into that in a second. Delighted to be back for our second season. And some news, we're going to be traveling to a lot of interesting places. This yeah, year. long time no see, Glenn. Yeah. Uh, we do have a big schedule of uh, brewery visits this year. We're going to be going to up, up to Yingling again. That was such a fun trip. Uh, we're going to visit sh uh, Ship Bottom Brewing. Right. And uh, we've got a special uh, edition where we're going to be going out to York, Pennsylvania, which is really the hot new beer town in Pennsylvania. Right, we're going to see Sly Fox. We're going to do some of the shows here at Conjohock and Brewing Company. It's really exciting. We got another brew down coming this year you're going to be announcing terms of that thing right we're going to get into a, we've got a, a full bracket analysis uh, yes. to go through oh, we're going to go to a selection uh, Saturday I guess it is uh, Professor Joe Sixpack <laughs> big hit last year it was gonna, wasn't it? gonna make yeah some more appearances uh, and we'll give you all kinds of news about what's happening in breweries what's happening in the scene and where you can get and enjoy the best beer around but as we film this show merely days from St. Patrick's Day Thus, this nonsense. Let's get that out of here. <laughs> uh, so we wanted, to, we wanted to talk about great Irish beers. And I brought you the one that, to me, was always the standard. We always start with our beer swap. This is Guinness, of course. And this is the Foreign Extra Stout. Um, and, uh, you know, when I started... A pro. You have your opener. Oh, I always you. have always. this with me. It goes nowhere. When I started drinking beer as a young man, Right, and you really mostly, I'm old, so you can mostly get American beers. God, look at the color on that baby. That's a beaut. Guinness to me was a really kind of fun, exotic, different thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it, I, was, it, it different. was unique. It was different, yeah. I mean, think about it. Guinness is owned by one of the biggest beverage companies in the world, mm -hmm. and yet its its flagship product is a dark beer. That's just right. unheard of. Most beer is just, you know, almost see-through, and here we got Tiny a little bubbles. Dark. Absolutely. I love it. Here's to you, new season. Cheers. All right. Mm. I love I love the, Classic the, the, beer. Now, the the coffee, the chocolate, whatever, that dark, good feeling in it. But here's the cool thing, Glenn, yeah. and you snuck one in on me here. This is not the, the typical Guinness that yes, everybody correct. drinks. Uh, the Guinness Draft is a very uh, easy drinking beer. It's low in alcohol. It's actually low in calories. You brought us the Foreign Extra Stout. I spare no expense. There, this is a, a classic. This is uh, the, the, the type of stout that uh, many believe that this is a recipe that maybe Guinness first used with uh, when it began making its stout so uh, many hundred years ago. Yeah, strong, a, I think it's like 7.5% yeah, alcohol. It, 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 it carries it too. So I went to Ireland a couple of years ago with my family. Like everybody who goes in Dublin, we went to the Guinness tour. A great tour. You know, so historic, that old brewery, and they show you how they make it. I couldn't have had a better time. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a pretty good uh, visit, but uh, I got a feeling you did not get the Joe Sixpack treatment when you went. Uh, you, you got the special tour? Uh, yes, they, uh, I brought a group over here, uh, over to Dublin, and we, they really treated us. They took us into a back room that nobody gets to back go into. Room? Yes. I ain't got no back room. And they served us beers. They're experimental beers. Uh, such a lot of fun. Guinness really does do make a lot of beers. We see the stout, but they make a lot of other varieties. Yeah, and, good stuff over yeah. there. All right, what would you bring me today? Okay, I brought you, let's see. This is a new one from 
Doylestown Brewing called Duffy's Cut. Maybe you can get us oh, a couple of glasses beer. behind us. Yes, Duffy's Cut from Doylestown. Uh, it is a really special beer because it is being sold to raise funds for a memorial and for the, uh, the the scientific excavation of something called Duffy's Cut, which I was not familiar with, along the Main Line Railroad out in Malvern, I believe oh, it is. I, I know exactly where that is. So during the uh, construction of that in the early 1800s, uh, there was an incident in which they brought over Irish immigrants to do all the work. Uh, a cholera outbreak occurs, and I believe it was 57 Irish immigrants die. A lot of controversy so are, about are it. Are they excavating the, the dead guys? What are they excavating? They are excavating bones. They are. And they are. They are also Holy doing cow. some. There's a belief that they uh, may have actually been murdered during the cholera oh. epidemic to prevent the spread of it. So wow. it's a really amazing local story. Uh, and this beer was brewed in uh, in honor of that. So it's a an Irish red ale, yeah. uh, which you don't really see a whole lot around. Mm -hmm. but I'm a fan of the red ale. It's got a nice, beautiful, really pretty color. Red tint to yeah, it. Good stuff. Good stuff. That's the first time I've tasted it. It's really smooth. Really enjoy it. Yeah, very nice. Good, good so, beer. Again, when I started drinking beer, Irish beer was Guinness and it was harp. Right. And we thought a harp is something special. Not so much anymore. Yeah. Huh? It, I mean, it used to be like if you saw harp on a draft somewhere, you thought, oh, that's a pretty good yeah, tap sure. to line up. These days, honestly, harp isn't special anymore. Yeah. It really isn't special anymore. Maybe to some of its fans, but it's just sort of disappeared. So what else you got? What else okay. did you bring? So uh, speaking of those red ales, I believe, let's see. Well, they're, actually, that harp is a red lager. Mm -hmm. This is these red ales in, in the U.S. have sort of come up. So now we have this uh, lucky sob, great name nice. from uh, Flying Dog, is a red ale. So is this. Uh, oh, that's there's the Schmidix. That's the one I was trying okay. to think of. A classic, not really as good as some of the uh, American uh -huh. crafts. Uh, the Craig from Harpoon, mm -hmm. another one. And this is one that just popped up this year that we really. Uh, Maybe we'll try this a little oh, bit flying later. Fish. Flying fish IPC stout. Yeah. Irish potato candy stout. It tastes wow. like cinnamon, All right. chocolate, and I believe I'm coconut. I'm in. All right. Now, we're going to go a little long on this segment. Let me do this because you brought Guinness marshmallow. What, what did you bring uh, yeah, for? You brought absolutely. these marshmallows. Okay, so Guinness marshmallows. These are from, uh, well, Full disclosure here, this is, uh, my niece has a small company called Sweet Jumbles. You can find makes her stuff. Makes designer marshmallows? Makes designer marshmallows, you can get them on Etsy. And she makes these right. out of Guinness beer. So You said to take this and to pour a beer over it. Right, so where's that Guinness? Let's All go right. for, well, or we could try, let's try, you try the Guinness. I'm gonna All try right. the dark beer here. There we go, this is, this is a Guinness marshmallow covered with Guinness. I gotta tell you, this. This is a real treat. All right, check that out. Yeah. All right, so there's a lot of yeah. uh, foam from the sugar. Yeah, you gotta I guess. wait on that, but we don't have time to wait because we're late for a break anyway. Here's to you. I'm gonna right. try it. Might need more. Oh no, I got a little sugar. You like it? Oh yeah, All a little right. sugar rush with my Guinness. Good. Mmm. Oh, Let me tell you something. This is good for the diet. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Do this. Get this. Enjoy yourself. All right, St. Patrick's Day. You see, I'm wearing green today. Absolutely. Well, it's not really hard when you're an Eagles fan to yeah, find the green Yeah, I know, to stuff. find the green. <laughs> but when we come back, we will tell you why people started drinking beer on St. Patrick's Day, like they needed a reason, and why we drink. Where'd that stuff go? This. I'll stick with this. Right here on What's Brewing. Welcome back to the Conshohocken Brewing Company, Bridgeport Brew Pub. This is What's Brewing, Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack. Now, what are you drinking? Uh, this is MC5, the uh, double dry hopped uh, IPA, one yeah, of my it's, favorites. Yeah, very, very good stuff here. Uh, and uh, Conshohocken Brew, Brewing Company now has five different places. We'll talk about that more later. But right now, we want to talk a little bit about St. Patrick's Day. As we film this, we're a few days away. Show should be running that week. 
It's the dumbest question in the world, but I looked up how St. Patrick's Day became associated with drinking. Right. Irish holiday drinking. What's, well, what don't you get there? This is what, <laughs> the, well, this is, there, there's actually a reason. It began as a feast in the honor of St. Patrick himself, and it comes during Lent. It was the one day during Lent where they allowed Irish Catholic people like, you know what, take the day off from everything you're giving up. <laughs> Catholic Church knew. Uh, Enjoy yourself. <laughs> but that went from just being beer, all kinds of good beer, to this stuff. Green beer. How did this start your six pack? All right, so so many people mock green beer. I have a soft spot because it's, you know, the whole idea of having a little bit of fun with beer, which I'm always all yeah, for. Sure. Uh, I did a lot of research about this a while ago and discovered that uh, 1914 was the invention of green beer uh, by a guy named. Yeah, think about the life you live. <laughs> uh, exactly. Uh, Dr. Thomas Hayes Curtin. He was the coroner in, I believe it was the Bronx. New York. Was this embalming fluid? Yeah, you would think so. In fact, actually what he did was had a huge party and he wanted to have green beer. So what does he use for it? Something called wash blue. Not green food dye, which is what you use. Wash blue. Wash blue. It's what housewives used to do the laundry with to bring out the whites in clothes. Blue. Yeah. Well, no. That does not sound like something I want to be doing. No reported deaths in that incident in 1914. What was the guy's job? Uh, he was a coroner. He so. was looking for business. Little business, exactly. Yes. So it's a fun thing today. All People right. do do green beer uh, with food dye. Right. And I know you were going to do some. Did I have? The, yeah. Actually, oh, we have we a go. glass back here. Okay. Uh, what to make the green beer, instead of that, I used this. Pick it up at any supermarket near you. What do we suggest here? I, How about the blonde? Know. It's just uh, yeah, the blonde's a, a nice light beer, so right. that'll that'll look at that. Give me that. Whoa, that looks so good. No wonder people drink this <laughs> it looks stuff. So good. <laughs> it looks I mean, like that's some good-looking beer. It's like a that giant thing of to cream to men. Okay, well, thank you. It was Thomas Curtin. Was that his name? Hey, enjoy yourself there, big guy. There you go. Good There'll stuff. be a lot of that. That's the way you're supposed to drink. I it, know. You know. There's going to be a lot of that had over uh, <laughs> over the course of this week, so that's good. Let's catch up on the news a little bit since we last talked. Hey, there was a government shutdown. I'm not sure you're aware of it. It <laughs> impacted people in a lot of ways. It also impacted the beer industry. That's right. Uh, uh, beer labels have to be approved by the federal government if they're going to be sold outside of their state. Very well so, aware of that. Right. There's, yeah. Exactly. There's, all, there's a government warning on it. They can't have certain things on the beer labels. So every beer has to be approved by the government. Well, guess what? When the federal government shut down, no more beer label approvals. And we saw a number of breweries either have to delay the production of their beer or just put it on hold forever. They just didn't do it because... So is there going to be a shortage or just they're going to recycle the old cans? I think they, they would just, exactly, they would continue making the beer that they already had approvals for. All right. In other news, since we last <laughs> did our show, man, more and more places opening. Absolutely. I mean, it just seems how amazing how many breweries keep opening. In, in just the few weeks that we've been off the air, I counted eight local breweries opening. Braylock in Kennett Square in Chester County, Tannery Run in Ambler, uh, Musings Underground. Uh, Musings Fermentation Underground, that's a mouthful. Yes. Uh, it's a blendery down in Newark, Delaware. Uh, the Coho Brewing in Cape May Courthouse. Current, which is a Fishtown cider maker, they open up a brewing a brewery as well. Steel City uh, Coffee House in Phoenixville. Geronimo. I always love the coffee there. Exactly. So that's, that's so they a fun have a place. It's still a coffee house, but they're serving right, their own right beer down now. the street from the Colonial Theater and the Conchahawken Brewing Company rec room. Exactly. Yeah, good area up there. Geronimo, new brewery in Doylestown, and finally, Conshohocken Brewing yeah. in King of Prussia. Right, which is going to be our major source of brewing. All right, one other real quick thing. Corn controversy, uh, Super Bowl. Bud went berserk <laughs> and then everybody else did. So the issue is, can you put corn in beer and still have it be counted as good beer? Yeah, the corn controversy, as they yes, call it. Yeah, it was work. A, it was a it was a it was wild that that this is something that Anheuser Busch decided to pick on. They just you know they mentioning that that corn syrup goes into some brews, namely Miller and Coors, their big competitors. Yeah. Never mind mentioning the fact that they put rice in their beer. Uh, so. Well, I think corn's got a bad. I think corn syrup has a bad image these days. So well, that, right. I, you that's, can get some mileage out of that. Exactly. I can see them. It's, it does have a bad image, but uh, nonetheless, corn in beer is a long tradition in America. Been going on for a corn or corn syrup. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah. yeah I think What's that the might be the difference. Yeah, maybe. Well, I then, think. You know, one's yeah. one difference. All right. Good stuff coming up. 
Last year we had a field of 16 IPA brew down. That wasn't enough. No. <laughs> We've gone 32 plus wild cards. Yes, we're, uh, we're, we're going go through the whole bracket just like they do before the big tournament right here on What's Brewing. Why walk when you can fly? Tap into your inner eagle. Yingling traditional lager. Spread your wings. This season, stay up, stay out, stay wild, stay cool, and stay together because you don't have to go far to get away. Book your stay and receive offers of up to $250 at these premier attractions. Welcome back to What's Brewing. We're at the Conshohocken Brewing Company Bridgeport Brew Pub. Joe Sixpack, Len Mack. Now, one of the highlights of our first season was the IPA Brewdown, the Field of 16. Right. We're now approaching the big NCAA tournament, and you've decided this year <laughs> to make it more complicated. Yeah. 16 wasn't enough, yeah, 16 right? 16 was actually really hard to do yeah. last year. We, uh, we uh, Trogues uh, won with their... Uh, their IPA, I forget yeah. which one it was, that but was good. at any rate, yeah. the, uh, we decided to go a little bit more in, and this year we've got 32 different IPA. No, you don't. You've got more than that. <laughs> you did a play-in yeah. bracket. Well, yeah, because it was so. I can't stop with just 32. I know. So let's go over just some of the rules. We're going to be doing this starting on our show next week. We're going to be doing two. Uh, Brack two brew downs a week, correct? Until we get to the champion. Yeah, of champions. more or less. If we remember to do two, because it's you know we had to do the Twitter poll, which right. is where you can. We're gonna do it on this. my Twitter page at Real Glen Mac. Now your Twitter page, which is Beer Radar. Beer Radar. So you can find them on that. We'd love you to vote. You set some rules. They all got to be in cans or bottles, except not exactly. Basically, they have to be available uh, locally mm -hmm. or packaged. I think there's only one or two exceptions, including Tired Hands, yeah. uh, the Alien Church. We had to put that in there. It's very hard to get that, but we had so many people asking us to include Tired Hands in this yes. bracket. Excuse me. So we uh, they're in there as well. Yeah, we solicited uh, advice from all of our viewers, and we appreciate that. Also, uh, breweries that competed last time are out. Yeah, we decided to move on so we don't have any Yards or Neshaminy Creek or Trogues, a bunch of other really good IPAs. We moved on to uh, a whole other uh, class. All right, well, let's look through some of the brackets and some of the matchups. The four We have the Pennsylvania bracket, right? Right. So we got that going. Uh, you had mentioned Tired Hands. People really like Tired Hands. That's in the bracket. Exactly. Tired Hands is probably the prohibitive favorite in that because we get hear so much about them. Yeah. You know, the people standing out there uh, in line for that. I'm actually going to go with an underdog in that one is my predicted winner, which is the Funk Double Citrus. Oh, you know I love that. Your that favorite was, beer from yeah, last year. that was my year. favorite beer last year. So love the Funk. We'll see how that goes. I'm a fan of the Funk. Okay, and then we got a Jersey bracket going on this year. Uh, and Kane, people, I've never had their beer I've got to try it. People say that's a terrific beer. Yeah, if you go on line, people talk about Kane. That's another one that gets long lines. Uh, uh, Mike Kane is the brewer there. He's making some unbelievably great beers. He's known more for some of the bigger, stronger, dark beers, but his uh, IPA is uh, is fantastic. Uh, what is that? Head High, I believe it's called. Uh, I'm sort of predicting them, except that Tonewood. Tonewood makes good stuff. Really good beer. Double and Nickel in double there. Double Nickel is yeah, my I other like that. uh, local That's a nice, favorite, that's so. a good one. Uh, we're going to pull all these brackets online so you can study them and pick out your favorites. And again, we want everybody to vote. We also now, we, you put in the mythical bracket, which is what, these iconic yeah, beers, because, right? Yeah, because like if, Destination you, go, if you go on to the, uh, to the various rating websites, there's uh, all kinds of people who put these beers way at the top, some of the highest Ooh. ranked beers, Ooh, the likes of, uh, of Russian River Pliny the Younger. Yeah, yeah, uh, which uh, I believe you had the other day, and I lost you for the whole day. <laughs> You're going to work on the show. You disappeared. Exactly. So what happened? You said, I discovered Pliny the Younger. Yeah. I'm out. Yeah, City Tap House uh, yeah, was thanks. serving it, and I fell over after that so yeah, okay. sorry about that pal <laughs> okay so if if we are doing that you got to have heady topper for me right yeah heady topper is actually Losses your the sunshine it was the okay. heady topper is your wild card yeah i love it's it. going to go in there against uh lawson's if if it wins Ooh. i'm i am actually uh rooting or picking as my wild card in that division 
a classic dogfish head, 120 minute IPA. Well, that's pretty good. Knock you on your butt, that one. It will, it will. Okay, that's good stuff. And the fourth division is the go to? So, what does that mean? Just kind of. All right, so these are IPAs, good stuff? really good IPAs that people just sort of think of uh, on a routine basis is generally available. You don't have to stand in line for them, they're out there. Uh, my wild card in that division was the Bell's Two Hearted, which is available oh, every Just a great IPA. Wait, is my, is my uh, going to go up against yours? Yes. Oh, I'm exactly. going to lose. I got the Lord Hobo, yeah. which I love, yeah. out of Massachusetts. You're going to kick my butt in yeah, that I know, one. Yeah, I know. I gamed this a little bit, uh, uh, Glenn, because, you know, I'm hoping okay. I know the voters. <laughs> so people will say, hey, you guys did IPAs last time. Why are we doing IPAs again? Well, first of all, it's where the most interest is in beer these days. I mean, I like all beers. I do drink all beers. Sometimes I get a little bit miffed that IPAs get all the, the uh, attention. But what the heck? Everybody makes really good IPAs yeah. these days. So let's, uh, let's talk about what your favorite is. It's, this is not necessarily the best IPA out there, but it's what your favorite is. Well, and I have a lot of favorites in that bunch, uh, including the stuff done right here at Concha Hocken Brewing Company. Again, you can vote. You will see them posted on a regular basis. We invite you to go to Joe Sixpacks at Beer Radar. Beer Radar. And mine, which is at Real Glenn Mac now, and cast your vote for your favorite IPA. All right, coming up right here on What's Brewing, we're going to talk about beer food, bar food, the best that's going on right now, including this just happens to be a deep fried Oreo, which I will enjoy during the break. With Joe Sixpack, I'm Glenn Mack now from the Conshohocken Brewing Company Bridgeport Brew Pub on What's Brewing. Welcome back to What's Brewing with the uh, Conshohocken Brewing Company Bridgeport Brew Pub with Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Macnow and Andrew Trapani joins us. Andrew is the assistant manager here and we, we wanted to bring you on today, Andrew, because we wanted to talk about brew pub food, hey, how right. much better the scene is getting, which it really has. And I've probably had 5,000 meals here at Bridgeport. Oh, and you're, <laughs> and you're always welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, so we want to talk about it and this one, uh, I want to start with this because I take pride in this. This is the cheese curds, and I will tell you that I introduced these to the menu. I do my annual food hunt on WIP. I went to a cheese, a um, food truck called the Cow and the Curd, had cheese curds for the first time, and loved them. Andrew, tell us a little bit about these. How Absolutely. They so. First off, it's made with Wisconsin cheddar, mm -hmm. and that's then seasoned and come up with a tempura batter that is really comes out really lovely and crisp, and it's then served with our sriracha aioli and our chipotle ranch dips on the side. Very slightly different flavors. The chipotle comes out with a real nice smoky balance to mm -hmm. it, but it's definitely something that stands out with that little bit of seasoning in there and then the two different uh, sauces. It's great. Try them. Try both it's the so dips because they really are good. And you actually told me earlier that it was made with the Type A beer. I was just coming back to it. Uh, so this is the Type A beer that you can see here in our cans. And the batter is actually blended in with that Type A. So it really gets that little bit of extra flavor in there from some of our home beers. And this is the Type A. goes perfectly with it. This really one's nice. actually my favorite beer that I drink here. When I get yeah. done my shift, this is the one I go to. Andy, what, uh, what part of Jersey are you from? Jersey? Well, actually, I'm from South Dakota. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm from Southampton, England, originally. I, that's a good point. Do we need to put subtitles? No, I think we're I think we're okay. By the way, that's where they launched the Titanic. That's the other thing that happened there. It wasn't my fault. Joe Sixpack, before we bring on the next food. Um, Overall, food in brew pubs has really stepped up in recent years. How come? Well, brew pubs in general have really served great food since the start, but really you're seeing the good food showing up in bars as well, mm -hmm. good appetizers. I mean, so much so that they're now referring to them as gastro pubs. Uh, but beer and food go really well together, and I think that what's happened is that places that serve beer have discovered that they bring people in uh, for longer, they can bring in, bring in big groups, they can bring in families. Oh. Oh, kids, just what good, you love. If they serve good food. So I'm all for it because, you know, food and beer, you know, 
perfect hey, match. It is a perfect match, and it, it, uh, it definitely helps. And the flavors that you can bring out of a beer, having something with the food. Agreed. Uh, what's, what's next? Well, we, we promoted this one in the opening, Glenn, and uh, oh, this yeah. is one that I've been a fa fan of. I mean, it sounds so weird. Fried pickles. I know, right? Uh, and I guess, is it, what kind of sauce is this that we got This is actually also the Chipotle Ranch oh, this, sauce. Okay. It's, it's one of my favorite uh, sauces that we have. It's got that, as I said, the smoky flavor that comes out. And you'll notice the first thing about this is that it's not the normal chips, the pickle chips that you get. This is a full dill pickle. Mm -hmm. And we, we see Cajun seasoned the bread on it so that when you bite into it, you get that lovely crunch and it just comes out really, really well. These yeah. are like, you know, these, first of all, they kill French fries. I'm sorry, but uh, these are great. They're unbelievably good. You pair them with anything? Any particular beer? Somebody so, says, what should I drink it with? So if I was going to pair this with something, I would go something a little light because it's got that Cajun spice to it. So probably maybe sunglasses, sunglasses at night with this. Okay, <laughs> which, is one, which is one of our new releases. Um, some of the things that people, some of the foods, we asked our uh, followers on Twitter and Facebook, what do they like at particular places? Uh, somebody named Hardadelphia said the duck spring rolls from West Reading Tavern. That sounds good to me. Hops dusted French fries from Chatty Monks. And somebody named Matt Geyer said pork wingettes with Korean barbecue sauce at Pottstown United Brewing. We brought one more thing, didn't we? We've got one, one more, more uh, dish here. Oh, here we go. This one, there it is. There we go. A little dessert oh, uh, for baby. us. Uh, I guess it's dessert. Andy said we should sprinkle a little sugar on here. Yeah. There we go. That looks good. And what are these? Yeah. So these are our deep fried Oreos. So <laughs> I love you, man. I, I know I keep I saying you. the word fried at the yeah. moment, but they, yeah, these are, there is a theme in there. It, there is a theme in here. These are deep fried Oreos. We <laughs> wanted to give something sweet back to the, the people who are coming in here. Everyone, mm -hmm. we actually get people who come in specifically for dessert. Oh yeah. So this is a, uh, a pancake, <laughs> a pancake based uh, batter around mm -hmm. simply an Oreo that oh you can buy in the, in the <laughs> shop. Oh, this is There's like the best thing of, I ever ate. <laughs> There's powdered sugar on top and of course some whipped cream there if you wanted to dip it in and get some extra flavor what? out of it. Oh, of course beer? I need some whipped cream. What yes. beer would you pair? So this one, so you want to go with something a little sweet if you can. Mm -hmm. So out of the ones that I have up right now, I would, oh my goodness, you know, I'd probably jump in, I'd probably jump in with a little bit of conchi vice. So it's okay. a Berliner vice, it's got a great flavor to it. It's going to- I like that idea, we'll try yeah. that. With a little bit of fruit to it as well, so it'll go really nicely All with right. it. All right, just for the record, there are healthy items here, I know. <laughs> there are. My friend always comes and orders the tuna and so on. Which is fantastic with the yes, sweet chili is. sauce yes. on top. It's yes. beautiful. My, it's one favorite of my wife. Well, this stuff, this stuff is great, and all the food is great. And as we said, check out the scene everywhere because we talk about beer, but so many of the places that we go to that we talk about really have fun, interesting food. I still love wings at a brew pub, a burger. My prof burger still on at all of our Absolutely. places. Even brought back the old prof burger to Havertown. But new, different, fun. Uh, very exciting scene going on. Yeah, I'd like to hear more from uh, our viewers here about what they like. Uh, check us out on YouTube and comment on this video, and uh, let's hear a little bit more about it. Yep. Andy, so, thank you so much for joining us, man. Uh, thank you. A I pleasure. appreciate it, gentlemen. Yeah, it was an absolute one. pleasure. Let me know if you need anything else. And that's going to wrap it up. We'll be back next week for another edition, the baseball edition hey. of What's Brewing. What's Brewing, brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board, download the app, and by the Conshohocken Brewing Company, now with five locations.